This instantly recognizable track is Inyo Morricone's score that is played over the titles of Sergio Leone's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. This three minute sequence designed by Eugenio Lardani acts as a microcosm of the entire movie, as we watch a story of murder and betrayal unfold. These are the same themes found within the film itself, and upon its 1966 release, the film received critical backlash for its use of violence coupled with what was called glamorization of war. In response to this backlash, Leone said, The killings in my films are exaggerated because I wanted to make a tongue-in-cheek satire on run-of-the-mill westerns. I think it's very important to view the movie in this context. If you're not familiar with the history of the western, they became popular as the Hollywood studio system began to collapse and a bigger emphasis was put on shooting on location. It was relatively cheap to send a cast and crew to a desert for a month of photography. And a lot of the western movies followed a very similar story arc with very similar characters. And the truth is, a lot of these early westerns are bad movies. As Leone saw it, the biggest problem with these early westerns was the tone in which they looked at early America. These westerns glamorized the rugged existence, painting it in a positive light with morally high characters and nothing that is truly evil. Leone set out to change this. He wanted to make a western that painted morality in an honest light, to remove the preconceived misconceptions and instead tell the story of three immoral characters. The film's title, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, is worth discussing. For one thing, it suggests very clear moral standings. The good is unequivocally good, and the bad is unmistakably bad, and the ugly falls somewhere in between these two. But as we'll look into later, that really isn't the case. The film's title and its language of origin, Italian, is Il Bueno, Il Bruto, and Il Cattivo. This tells us a lot more than what the English title may suggest. Most importantly is how the ugly, Il Bruto, falls between the good and the bad, referring to how Tuco struggles to live a moral life in an immoral world. It's also worth mentioning that the translation of ugly doesn't necessarily refer to looks, so much as it does the personality of the character. When we are introduced to these characters, we are also told which of the three roles they will play. Where there is ambiguity is whether or not they deserve their given titles of good, bad, and ugly. The film opens with three men in pursuit of Tuco. He shoots at them, killing two and injuring a third, and makes his getaway. His actions are far from good, they are serving his own self-interest. This is harshly contrasted with the introduction of Angel Eyes. He comes to the house and for minutes just stands in the doorway. It is the representation of inescapable evil. There is no way out, you just need to face him. He then proceeds to kill three people. One in self-defense, and two because of promises that he made no! to the other. Angel He is the true embodiment of evil, killing not because there is any real need to, but instead because he wants to. However, where the lines of righteousness and immorality is smeared is with Blondie. When we first meet him, we watch him murder three bandits so that he can collect his half of a $2,000 bounty. And he doesn't do this because he values Tuca's life. Just one scene later, he leaves him in the desert. Adios. When we meet these characters, they aren't very different from one another. All are willing to murder people either for money or for personal freedom. However, the differentiation between these three happens when another element is added to the film. The Civil War Despite most westerns taking place in America during the Civil War era, most avoided it completely. The good, the bad, and the ugly not only touches upon it, but embraces it, and makes it a central plot point. This is an Italian movie written by four Italian men, but uses the American Civil War as a way to comment on the way in which people perceive war itself. Today, when looking back on the Civil War, it becomes easy to view the North as the heroes of the war and the Confederates as the villains. But as we have already touched upon, nothing is that concrete in the Wild West. The fundamentals of what the Union was fighting for is undeniably stronger than the Confederates, but ultimately, this movie says that in a war, it is wrong for both sides to be fighting. We see this with the different representations of military leaders. Angel Eyes, a Union sergeant, is a bloodthirsty killer. He has no morals and only has the position he does 
so that he may pursue his evil ventures. This in turn is harshly contrasted with his commanding officer, who says, Well, I'm in charge here, the prisoners are not to be tortured, or cheated, or murdered. Now, this is yet again contrasted with the inclusion of this general. You better learn to distinguish rank. I'm a captain. My apologies. This captain, who has no interest in fighting at all, but he has to. So in response, he drinks away any emotions he has left. The point being, the movie shows that the uniform you wear has no indication of your quality as a person. Tuco and Blondie go from wearing Confederate uniforms to enlisting in the Union Army. We, we want to enlist, General. In this scene, the Union soldiers cover themselves in dust to make their uniforms look gray. Later during the war scene, the smoke from the cannons and muskets and the dirt being kicked up makes everyone's uniform look the same. This movie says that the title that you are given doesn't matter so much as what you do with it. In what is the most emotional scene in the movie, we are introduced to an unnamed Confederate soldier who is forced to play music. So the commanding officers don't hear Angel Eyes and Wallace torturing Tuco. We watch the soldier break down emotionally as he realizes what he is forced to do, revealing that in this movie, war itself is just as bad as any one character. The three titular characters' titles become clear when we see them interact with the war. Angel Eyes is undeniably pure evil. He uses the war to satisfy his two instincts. He needs to kill, and he needs money. War is his way of profiting, and he disregards the value of human life so that he may succeed. Tuco, on the other hand, doesn't care about the war. Down with General Grant! Hurrah for General... What's your name? Lee. 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 Ah. Like Angel Eyes, he values himself more than anybody else, but doesn't want to hurt anybody so that he may succeed. He is selfish and self-driven, but in a world where people kill for pleasure, he rises above that. The final piece of the puzzle is Blondie, the good, il bueno, somebody who by the end of the movie starts to value human life. We see him brought to the brink of death multiple times, and only through this does he realize the value of human life. As he makes his way towards the money and sees the unnecessary violence and the deaths of the Civil War, he takes up a stand against the war and slowly becomes the good. Never seen so many men wasted so badly. The movie ends with one of the best moments in cinematic history, a five and a half minute scene in which Blondie, Tuco, and Angel Eyes have a shootout over the gold. There isn't much to say about this scene that hasn't already been said. It perfectly utilizes the tools of the cinematic language, editing, the soundtrack, the different camera angles, and the way that the camera slowly tightens and closes in on their eyes, showing us who these characters really are. Until... But, this moment tells us the most when looking at the end result. Blondie takes the bullets out of Tuco's gun to ensure that Tuco won't turn on him or shoot Angel Eyes. When Blondie shoots Angel Eyes, he only shoots him to injure him and doesn't kill him until Angel Eyes reaches for his gun to shoot Blondie. Throughout The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, we watch characters struggling to find where they belong in this immoral world. It's a journey of character as much as it is a journey to the graveyard. We watch Blondie slowly develop into a savior, willing to forgive Tuco for bringing him face to face with death. Now, although by today's standards these murderers may not be viewed as good, in a world with no morals, a little good can go a long way. Thank you so much for watching. This really is one of the best movies ever made. If you somehow haven't seen it yet, you should drop what you're doing right now and watch it as soon as possible. It's an action movie that focuses on drama, character, and morality. It holds up better than most and is rightfully a classic. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot of content in the works in the future, and I'm excited to bring it to you over the next few months. I'm also going to leave a link to my last video in which we looked at Westworld and what it means to be conscious and human. Be sure to check that video out if you haven't seen it yet, and thanks for watching.